In the previous videos, we mentioned about the design of an RC stairs is similar to the design of an RC slab, where most of the calculation steps, the formulas to design for the reinforcement bar in resisting the bending moment, shear loops, the serviceability requirements such as the maximum minimum amount of reinforcement bar, spacings of the reinforcement bar, deflections, the calculations are similar. However, there are several design considerations which are not similar between the RC stairs and the slabs. This is particularly referring to the permanent loops, where for the staircase, we will need to provide sufficient allocations to cater for the weight of the steps, finishes, as well as the increased loading on plane concussions by the inclinations of the waist. In another word, we cannot simply estimate the self-weight of the staircase based on the thickness of the waist of the staircase. This will underestimate the self-weight of the staircase. For clearer explanations, let us look at this diagram here. We have the sections of the staircase where we have goings, riser and waist. And this waist represents the thickness of the staircase as measured from the corner tips between the goings and riser to the inclined surface of the staircase which is perpendicular to this inclined surface. However, due to the gravity, the self-weight of the staircase it will be vertically downward. Therefore, the effective thickness of the staircase by definition should be in the vertical directions which we need to first convert this waist into the vertical distance y here and then based on the vertical y here we estimate the average thickness of the staircase for us to calculate the self-weight of the staircase as acquired by multiplying the average thickness with the unit weight of the staircase now the question is how do we first convert this waist to the y? This can be done by using some simple ratio on basis of the trigonometry and the principles of the right angle triangles. You know that the inclined surface of the staircase should theoretically be parallel to a construction line joining the corners of each staircase. Therefore, based on the riser and the going here, we are able to determine the inclined angle of the staircase, which in this case, we use phi as a symbol. And based on the principles of the trigonometry, the relationship between the h, y and the angle will be represented by the diagram here. H is in this direction, which is parallel to the thickness of the waist, and the Y is in the vertical direction, parallel to this direction, and the angle phi, it will be here, between the H and Y. Now you see two right angle triangle here, when both right angles triangles are with the same angle, their ratio should be equal. And on this basis, we are able to find the relationship between the H and Y. From the diagram here, normally the specifications of the staircase given, it will be the going, riser, and the waist. The y here is unknown, which if we calculate in terms of the ratio here, there will only be one unknown, and 
we are able to determine the y based on the two triangle here. Now we are taking the ratio between the h and the y. The h will be beside of the angle phi here and the y will be the hypotenuse. On basis of the G and R relationship, it will be between the G and the hypotenuse length here. Based on the theorem of hypotenuse, the length here it will be equals to the square root of G square plus R squares. Rearrange the equation here, you get this formula. Now that we have acquired the y here, which is conversion of the h in the vertical directions, now we will need to estimate the average thickness of the staircase by taking into the considerations of the steps of the staircase. With the assistance of the y, it is actually representing the thickness of the staircase in this manner. And we will need to incorporate the additional part of the staircase here. And with the assumptions, it will be an average of R, which is R divided by 2. It is assumed that the effective thickness of the staircase, it will be equals to Y plus half of this R. And this average thickness will be multiplied with the unit weight of the concrete, which is 25 kN per meter cube. We are able to determine the self-weight of the staircase. Now when we need to calculate the permanent actions, it will be the combinations of the self-weight of the staircase plus the finishes and the permanent looks acting onto the staircase. As for the characteristic variable actions, you may refer to the Eurocode 1 for a suitable value to be adopted in the design. And when you want to design for the ultimate limit state, the GK is to be multiplied with the 1.3 factor of safety and the QK will be multiplied with 1.5 factor of safety. Next, we will proceed our discussions with the bending moment and the shear force, which we have mentioned in our previous videos. In terms of the simplified method to estimate the bending moment acting onto the staircase, which is equal to FL divided by 10. We mentioned that the F represents the total ultimate load and the L here, it will be representing the effective span of the staircase which also in our previous videos we mentioned about the methods for us to determine the effective span which is when the beam is applied it is defined by the center distance between the two beams regardless the positions of the beams however if the landing slab is embedded within the load bearing wall, we will need to check two criteria here and choose for the smaller effective span. It is either the centroid of the supporting landing slabs or the distance of the edge between the support of the landing slab plus 1.8 in total meters. Now we will see how this FL per tank will be adopted. As represented by the slide here, we are talking about FL per tank, which can also be written in the mode of WL square per tank. It is very much dependent on the setup. It is very much dependent on the setup of the staircase, depending on the locations of the beams as well as the support, whether it is within the load bearing wall. Now the idea is, if there is an adjacent slab beside the staircase, we will consider it as a continuous member. 
such as something like this and if there is no adjacent slab something like this we will consider it as a simple supported end you will first sketch the bending moment diagram based on whether it is continuous or simply supported end which for the first case here there are slabs adjacent to the span of the staircase here that means we will expect the negative moment at the support and positive moment at the mid-span and now the moment here it can be taken as WL square per 10 or FL per 10 let's say now we look at the second case here we have a beam here as a reaction and another beam here there will be a landing here and you have adjacent slab with that we will consider the entire span to be continuous there will be negative moment at the support and positive moment at the mid span of the staircase let's say the third conditions here this end will be simply supported while this end it will be continuous that will give you the bending moment diagram something like this moment at the mid span and moment at the continuous edge same goes to this which you do not have the adjacent slab here now you will have zero moment at one end moment at the mid span and negative moment at the support all this moment will be equals to WL square per 10 or FL per 10